What is one of the easiest way in the world to pick out a good crankbait color? And honestly, be right most of the time. Good morning, guys and girls. May 29, May 29. We're going to be looking at Mark 13, 13, Mark 13, 13. Before I start, if you are not subscribed to the Catch of the Day channel, go hit that subscribe button right now. This channel will literally change your life. I've said many, many times it is the most important channel on YouTube, and I get a lot of comments that tell people that's been on this channel and we started it only April of last year about 16,000 people on there and uh, and it's just an amazing channel because it starts your day no matter what time of the day you look at it you can you have a fishing tip so you can be a better fisherman you have a scripture so you'll be closer to God and a devotional which will even help more drawing you closer to God and if you're closer to God you're gonna be a better person you're gonna be a better person talk about a self-help channel this is the ultimate self-help channel right here. By the way, I want to thank my buddies back down in Texas, the North Texas Bass Assassins. They have made me an official member of their club last year, year before last, and I, they just sent me a brand new shirt. Beautiful shirt. I thought I would wear it. I am allowed to go fish any and all of their tournaments if I want to. Now, I've kind of quit tournament fishing, uh, but, uh, but I'm telling you, it's a great bunch of guys down there. A great bunch of guys. I love them. Mark 13, 13. Those people who keep their faith until the end will be saved. It's pretty easy for a Christian to lose their faith. It's pretty easy for anyone to lose their faith. Let a little wrong go happen in your life. Let a little health problem, let a, a little financial problem, let a little relationship problem, a little children problem. Something goes wrong in your life, it's real easy to lose your faith, to stop trusting God with all you have. And, uh, and, and I'm telling you, you know, we've been through a lot this last few weeks and uh and 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 i gotta tell you my faith was challenged and immediately when that happened one of the things i did was i asked god god give me more faith give me more faith give me your strength give me faith and uh and and, and i and he did I, he actually did you know i've never wavered in the fact that i believe that god is healing chris she still has a long way to go. We're, uh, we're uh, over half a hundred days into this deal, and she still can't do anything with that right leg. Or her, her right leg is moving a little bit, and she can kind of stretch, stiffen it out and, and balance a little bit on it. She still, you know, can't walk. Uh, she's still having trouble with her speech. Her right arm is just totally incapacitated right now. I'm still believing. I still have faith that God is going to let that girl walk, going to let her talk plainly. If it takes six months, if it takes six years, I don't know. But I'm going to be right there by her side making it happen. But the Bible tells us that those people who keep their faith until the end will be saved. Saved from what? Saved from what? Saved from eternal damnation. Saved from whatever you need to be saved from as you live this life on earth and saved from hell for eternity. That's what you're going to be saved from. Those who keep their faith. You keep your faith, whatever's going wrong in your life right now, it's going to be straightened out. Let's see what I wrote about this. Oh, this is a good one. I remember this. Once I made an appearance for Ranger Boats in Virginia, I was to arrive in Roanoke, Virginia, take the shuttle to the hotel, and then be ready to work the very next morning. My day had started at 5 a.m., and I was looking forward to a good night's sleep. My last plane was late, so I arrived at 12.30 a.m. The hotel shuttle had closed, so it was so late. No taxi in sight. Didn't have Uber back in those days. I called a taxi. I waited for 30 minutes, and finally one showed up. No problem. I was in my room by 1.45 a.m., so I didn't have to get up till probably 5 or 6 o'clock in the morning, so I was going to get two or three hours sleep. The room... A smoking room. Oh, you remember smoking rooms? A lot of hotels don't even have them nowadays. They all had them back in then. There was no discrimination. You can smoke in a room or not smoke in a room. I've never smoked a cigarette in my life. Not one. And I couldn't breathe. I honestly couldn't breathe. You know, there was a time when I'd be around people and they say, it's okay I smoke. I say, sure. I smoke in my boat, in my car, in my truck. It didn't matter because you, every, we were all used to it. We were all kind of contaminated, actually, probably. Uh, we were used to it. And it didn't bother us. But, but, you know, once we started breathing fresh air in hotel rooms, in restaurants, in houses, in our cars and vehicles, if somebody fired up a cigarette, it'd just choke you up. That just tells you how bad they really are. I mean, it just tells you how bad they really are. But, uh, but I couldn't breathe. I mean, literally could not breathe. It just stuffed me up immediately. So back to the front desk I want. 
no non-smoking rooms. None. They were all gone. No non-smoking rooms available. As I unpacked, I found that I had no razor. <laughs> I had no shaving cream. Ah! I was in bed at 2.30 a.m. finally. I slept with the outside door wide open and the air conditioner on high. That's right. I actually left the door to my hotel room open, wide standing, wide open. Somebody could have walked in there, killed me, knocked me in the head, done whatever they wanted to do, stole everything I had out of my, out of my, my billfold, whatever. I left the door wide open. I had left the air conditioner on high just in order to be able to breathe and get a couple hours sleep. Throughout it all, throughout it all, beginning with that late plane, I continually ask my God to keep me Christ-like. And he did. And he did. I was so proud of myself. No one there to pat me on the back. No one there to see me. But I just, uh, I, I, I just, I, I just kept telling God, God, don't let me lose it. Don't let me lose it. I'm going to keep the faith. I'm going to keep the faith. I'm going to keep the faith. And I did. And, you know, I only got a couple hours sleep that night, maybe two and a half. But I was rested just fine the next day. God gave me that. And I went and did my appearance for, for, for Ranger, met a lot of great people, a lot of fantastic people there in Virginia at that Ranger dealership. Some of them bought some boats, so that was always, that's always good. And just had a great time. I just did not let that destroy my face. All the bad things. Looked a little ragged, hadn't shaved, hadn't shaved since the previous morning at 5 o'clock. But uh, looked a little ragged. But I look a little ragged a lot. That's just me. I'm an outdoorsman. I'm a redneck. I look a little ragged. Look a little ragged right now, probably. <laughs> but anyway, you keep the faith until the end, and you will be saved. You'll be saved for eternity. You'll be saved for tomorrow, for next week, for the following week, for the following week. God will save you from the bad things. And when they happen, you keep the faith. You realize that God is controlling what you do in your life, and he's making things good. He's straightening out the crookedness in your pathway. Okay, here's our tip for this week. It's a good one. It's an easy one. And you remember I asked, how do you pick out a good color crankbait? And you're right most of the time. You match your crankbait color to the color of the dominant bait fish. Early in the year, a lot of times that's crawfish. That's a crawfish. Crawfish, that's right. Crawdid, we call them as rednecks, but crawfish. Match it to a crawfish color. Uh, as you get into the summertime, you, in the spawning season, match it to a baby bass color. Match it to a, a bluegill color. As you get into the summertime, shad colors and so forth. You go up north and fish. You know, I was up there just the other day fishing on the St. Lawrence River, and they got a lot of yellow perch. In fact, we went by one area where there was 30 or 40 boats, and I asked my, my buddy who guides up there, Will Clute, I said, what are they all fishing for? Are they catching walleye? He said, they're catching perch. And I said, we think of perch. We're thinking bluegill and stuff down here in the south. But he said, they're catching perch. And I said, yellow perch or bluegill? He said, yellow perch. And he said, a lot of them are a pound, and they're allowed to catch 50. And he said, they go out there and catch 50 in the morning. They go back and catch 50 in the afternoon, which I'm not sure if you're supposed to do that. But, but, uh, but so, so you know what I did? I put on a yellow and black. That's right. A yellow and black red man spinnerbait. Oh, y'all don't know about the red man spinnerbait. We're bringing it back. We're bringing it back. Hopefully, maybe in the next month or two, we'll have those. It's the old-time spinnerbait that I won the 1976 and 1986 BASS Angler of the Year on. It's an amazing spinnerbait. It's old-fashioned, but it's got tricks and traits and fish-catching abilities that new spinnerbaits don't have. I, I didn't even mean to talk about that. I apologize. Forget everything I just told you, okay, about the spinnerbait, that is. But we're going to have it out pretty soon. But I put on a yellow and black spinnerbait, and I smoked them. I started smoking them because those smallmouth, They've been feeding on yellow perch. Guys and girls, go out there and have you a great one today. And remember, I sure do love you. To my buddies down there at North Texas Bass Assassins, I love you all a bunch. Take care, pals. Bye-bye.